Welcome to Lady Rit. It's Lil Rit. You won't see me until the end of this video because I was recovering from a really bad flu. But I'm better now so I'm making a wig with this gorgeous hair I found at a beauty store. You know those shops you always go to but you never know the name? It's that kind of shop. This hair is by Magic in the color 1 slash 30 and it has two bundles each of 20, 22 and 24. I'll be using my 22 inch canvas head. I just wrapped it with cling wrap and clear tape so that it doesn't get dirty. That's my little business card, Crush on Lulu. All the wigs I make can be ordered from crushonlulu.co.za with customization for human hair wigs. As always, I use a wig cap with adjustable straps. Always make sure the straps are on the inside of the wig, never outside. I like to use polyester thread. It's stronger than cotton and it's stretchy. You need C-shaped needles, lots of T-pins, and a seam ripper or scissors is fine as well. The first thing I do is line up the center of the wig cap with the center of the canvas head. And then I stretch the cap and pin it all around. I'm on the road, but I'm coming right back. You said I don't treat you like I used to, but I only ride for you. Now I'm going to draw my guidelines using a metallic marker. You can use any silver marker because it washes out of the wig cap easily. I'm spacing this the width of my thumb, which is about 2 centimeters. When I reach the part of the cap with the roses, I continue my lines as if there was a closure there. So the straight lines end there. The ones in the center will be short lines that basically form a circle. Now for the part where the bangs will be. I find the center and make a mark. That's where the closure piece will go, which I'll show you how to make. And then I start drawing circles or squares using my index finger for spacey. By doing this, the bangs will not be too thick. I'm going to thread three needles. That way I don't have to stop and re-thread all the time. Don't forget to make a knot at the end of each thread. I'm starting with the longest bundle, which is the 24 inch. Now, these are not your 100 gram bundles. If you double your widths or spaces wrong, you will run out of hair and then you'll cry. Also, on single widths, one side always has short hairs. The short side needs to be at the bottom facing the wig cap so that they don't show. I pin a wift down so that it lays flat as I'm sewing. The first two stitches on the edges Always go through the weft whilst the rest go underneath. As I go along, I wrap the thread around the needle three times before pulling it and that makes every stitch secure. Before I stitch to the end, I cut the weft. Then I begin stitching through the weft again, but I go backwards and forwards a few stitches to close the weft. Then I make a knot and finally cut the thread and make a new knot. Notice that these bundles are smaller than regular bundles. That is why I'm sewing single wefts and then filling it in later. There is just not enough hair to double the width from the start, but also using another pack of hair would be too much hair when you see how this turned out at the end with only one pack. I used one bundle from each pair. So first I used a 24, then a 22, and then a 20 inch. The three bundles left will be used in between the lines. That is what the thumb spacing is for.
too. I got the money coming quick like your ex do. And we fight and we cry and we kiss and we scream, but we always link up like a Bluetooth. And you know I love everything you gon' say. You know your body look great on the runway. And them curves got these niggas looking sideways. So now I just added the bundles and ended at the center of the wig. When you add the first three bundles, it should look like this. I basically built the skeleton of the wig and now I can flesh it out and start filling in the center with the last three bundles. And I'm also going to carry on with the 20 inch and then fill in the wig with the 22 and the 24. When I reached the center, I have a hole where I drew a dot. I took a weft and rolled it to the size of that hole. When I got the exact size, I cut out the extra weft and started sewing that weft into a row. This is what it should look like. And then you need to find the center and spread out the hair. I forgot to film this, but you need to flat iron that center piece. Now I just sewed it into the hole, which basically involves sewing around the edges of the piece, as you can see here. Now all I have to do is add the remaining two bundles starting from the center and working backwards which honestly took very little time.
this is what it should look like with the full pack of hair now for some reason i thought it would be a good idea to try to cut the bangs whilst wearing the wig spoiler alert bad idea i could not see what i was doing and they were just too long it wasn't so bad but i usually cut the bangs on my mannequin that has a face so that is what i ended up doing and i cut some layers on the side This turned out exactly how I imagined it. It's bouncy and full of volume. And because of how I spaced the hair, the bangs are lightweight and I can see my eyebrows. I personally prefer very light bangs on fringe wigs. I just think it looks super cute. This wig will be my protective style this winter. It's really quick and easy to put on because I don't have to glue down lace or make baby hairs saving me time and edits don't forget to like subscribe and share if you found this video helpful bye